Hi, welcome to the breadboard. Um, never done a video quite like this before, but I've been having a lot of problems recently with my home network. So my router, which is a Netgear one at the moment, uh, has been repeatedly dropping its uh, Wi-Fi uh, transmitter receiver where if the network would just disappear on the Wi-Fi and I'd have to go reboot the router. And I've also noticed occasionally that if I'm doing a heavy download, it'll just collapse and reboot. So it's very, very old. So I figured that, you know, maybe it's time I um, got a new one with maybe some new features and things. So I started to look around. And with all the research I did, you know, there are some really pretty fancy dancy uh, routers available from Asus and a whole bunch of other um, vendors that look like they're, you know, like a TIE fighter and dead beetles and God knows what upside down with their legs up and multi-channel and, you know, things like that. But they're all somewhere between, you know, three, four hundred dollars up to five hundred and even more. Um, and the problem I see with those is that they still just give you a, uh, a single device that wherever you put it, that's where all your Wi-Fi and everything else is going to be served from. And because of the nature of where my lab is and various other things, I need my router um, in my basement at the front of my house so that I can plug it into my switch and that's where all my networks, my um, hardwired Ethernet runs to all the other parts of the house. And that's always been one of the issues that I've had to have a second Wi-Fi router or Wi-Fi access point um, elsewhere in the house too. Um, it, in this case, it was an Apple one I got a way back. So I've always had this issue about having to maintain these two different things and uh, different Wi-Fi access points depending where you are in the house and everything else. So I wanted to find something that was going to be easier to use, simpler to set up, would you believe? Yes, I found that. And that's going to be uh, robust and long lasting. And I did a you know, bunch of Googling and everything else. And I ended up coming across um, Unify, Ubiquity Networks. Uh, they have a product range called Unify a a Access Points. And that's what I've got up on the screen here. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different ones. And the one I landed on was the APAC uh, LR, which is long range, because I've got a lot of walls that just drywall and things. But you know, the reality with Wi-Fi is, even with 2.4 gig, never mind 5 gig, there, your signals rapidly diminish as you get further and further away from the Wi-Fi point. So I've got two um, LR Wi-Fi access points. They're only like $120 each or something. So we're up to say $240. Um, and I'm going to put one at the front of the house upstairs and one at the back of the house upstairs. They'll penetrate the wooden floor easy enough um, because it's just one penetration. So between the two of them, they will cover the front of the house, including the garage and in the back of the house right out into the garden as well. Um, and for a router, what I ended up going for was uh, an edge device. Let me just see if I can bring that up on the screen here. OK, here we are. Here's all their routers. And the one I ended up with was an edge router POE. Uh, basically, it's got, it's a five port router, but one of them you use as the WAN port. It doesn't do anything from a Wi-Fi perspective. It's just a uh, basically a four port router with the uplink as well, which is going to go on this in this case Ethernet zero or one um, out to my broadband um, modem, and the other four are going to be used for going out to devices. Now the two access points that I've got use power over Ethernet to power them. Now they do come with some PoE adapters if you don't have a router that will handle it directly. But in this case, this this edge router has got built in PoE as well. And these last three ports you can configure, I think it might be all four of them, to provide PoE power to the devices. So the two access points will get powered directly from the router. Um, now the router has also got extensive diagnostics and configuration and everything else in it. Um, way more than I expected for the price because this this router if I bring up the uh, I bought them from Newegg. This is not a sponsored video by the way. This is purely me picking what I want for my own use and spending my own money to do this. So let me just find the ad that I used. Okay, so here we are. We're on Newegg.ca because I'm in Canada and the one I got was this Ubiquity uh, ERPOE5 US Edge Router. 
So it's a five port advanced router. It's a $227. So about to about the same price as it would have been for an Asus or one of the advanced Netgears or something like that. Um, and so 227 it's got um, free shipping, I think, right now, yep. And so this is the router I ended up getting. So the, between the two access points in the router, I can now have all of my high-speed switching, firewalls and everything else connected close to my switch in the basement. I already have a 16-port gigabit switch there. Um, and then using a couple of the Ethernet cables that I've got running around the house, I can provide power over the Ethernet to power the Wi-Fi points and then get complete house coverage. Now, the other thing about the Wi-Fi access points is um, they've got 5 gig and they've got 2.4 gigs, but they're also running 3x3 three three on the 2.4 gig uh, MIMO operation so you've got multiple inputs multiple outputs simultaneously and then the 5 gig I think has 2x2 two two MIMO. These are the three parts that I've built now the next thing I've got to do is obviously get it installed so what I intend to do is bring it up in stages the first thing would be to um, put the router into place and configure it. Now you have to download some software to configure the router it does have a console port it doesn't come with a cable to connect to it um, but the router by default comes up on 192.168.1.1. So you just have to make sure your computer is configured to be on that same subnet. So, you know, 192.168.1.2 perhaps. And then just plug into any one of the LAN ports and you'll be able to communicate with the uh, router and then configure it. The software to download it is free from Ubiquity, so you can just download it. Now, they do have various methods of control. I'm not going to get into all the details of that uh, software right now. You can um, SSH into them and use a command line. They're all running um, processes with uh, a variant of some kind of Linux type operating system. Um, and so you can do everything at the command line if you wanted to. But the tool that you can download makes that life so much easier. Uh, collecting stats, setting up the firewalls, DHCP, DNS, um, pretty much everything. And it makes it look like a seamless network. So I guess the first thing to do is, um, you know, there's no point in showing you the, the router. I do have a picture. I took the lid off of it just to look inside. So I'll put a picture up of that so you can see what's in it, uh, is to put the router into where my network is currently and we'll start configuring and I'll record the process of configuring it. Um, I'll just blank out any sensitive bits that are pertinent to uh, my privacy but outside of that I'll show you everything I do. So let's get to that. So this is my existing panel that I have. It's on the wall in my basement near um, where my cable network comes in. This bottom device is a uh, cable modem. So you've got my coax coming in from the outside in the street and power coming in and then you've got a single uh, 100 gig ether 100 gig 100 meg ethernet coming out to the uplink of my uh, Netgear router right now. The other four ports here, one drops right out to my Cisco um, phone adapter because I use a VoIP phone system for the home and the other three one goes directly to my PC and the other two go off to um, other devices around the house. So one of them is my gigabit switch which then divides out to all the other uh, outlets in the house and one of them goes up to uh, my server so that I have uh, um, faster access to my server as well from my PC so I'm minimizing the uh, paths that I have to take. Um, and that's pretty it, much it. So this is the device at the top here um, that I'm going to be replacing. The Cisco seems to work fine. The modem doesn't seem to be any issues with that. Uh, every time I've lost my network connectivity, either via the Ethernet or via the uh, Wi-Fi, all I've done is rebooted this. No disconnecting anything, just powered it off, powered it back on again. And uh, everything came back to life. So that pretty much confirms that it is this and I've done firmware upgrades and everything else and none of that has you know it's improved it a little bit but it's still doing it so the first thing I've done is made a uh, made copies of all of my configurations of what I have in here because I have a lot of um, 
Wemo devices and Sonos and servers and various other things, that a lot of them have got static IP addresses. So I want to recreate that static environment with the new router. Um, this is the router on like the edge view. So you can see here we've got the 2.45 gig. Uh, it's got USB, but I've never used it, so I didn't care that the new router doesn't have it. The Wi-Fi is built in, and as you can see, there's no external antennas. I mean, this thing has fa been fairly reliable for the longest time, but I've always had those limitations about range and things like that, um, which is why I had to set up a second one. So, you know, it's time to upgrade it, and that's why it's going. So the new router... Um, is going to go on here and I'm going to, as I said, replace this one. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to go offline now and I'm just going to replace it, plug it all in. Um, I should be able to immediately connect. It should still let me get directly to the internet because the default setup for it will be there. And then we'll go in and we'll start configuring it and, you know, basically making it my own. Uh, and um, I'll record that process. So let's get to it. I'll be right back as soon as I've got the new router screwed to the wall. Now, the one thing, that, the, the one nice thing too, is that this even the router comes with its power supply. It's 24 volts to 48 volts, and that's because it also wants to be able to supply the PoE. It also comes with all the uh, mounting hardware, the screws and things to put it on the wall. One of the hardest things I found with a lot of these devices, they have the little slots on the back so that you can mount them. But and I'll put a picture up for what's on the back of this new one. But, you know, it's always a struggle to find screws that have flat enough heads and small enough heads that will go in the hole, secure it well enough on the wall, um, and still allow you to, you know, lift it on and off without a major struggle. So it's nice to see that the hardware is actually being provided with it, which is good. So anyway, let's get to putting it on. I'll be right back once it's in and we'll get the software fired up. I guess one quick good thing to try and do before I get started will be to actually do a speed test of the current router and um, then we can do a comparison when we're done to make sure we haven't got any worse. It's reliability, not speed improvement that I'm specifically after here. So let's um, bring up speed test and we'll see what we've currently got. So considering I have a 60 gig download um, that is probably my router being screwy again yeah I've got a faster uplink than I have on a downlink right now which is awful yeah looks like I'm having a bad morning for <laughs> my internet access okay so one of the things that I just discovered is that the firmware on the router is sitting at 1.2 and the current version is at 1.10 and there's probably at least a dozen versions in between. 1.2 is from way back in 2013 so I'm not sure why a new router is coming with such an old level of firmware on it but anyway I'm going to try and update it. I tried to go straight to the very latest one and it failed so tech support from Ubiquiti suggests that I um, do a two hop to get there so install 1.5 and then install 1.8 and then try 1.10 so I've just uh, I was having some problems even getting that to work I just rebooted the router went straight in and did it again and this time it looks like 1.5 did go up apologize for not showing you the uh, first upgrade but I'll show you the next one so need to reboot it right now I'll be back in a sec once it's back up again And you get a nice little message saying it's in the process of being rebooted. I'll just pause while I wait for it to reboot, and then I'll be back. One of the things that made me notice that there was something wrong was actually when I was going through the user guide. Let me just bring it into view right now. And at the top, it actually tells me that I need to be using, or the guide is geared around using one point. Where is it? It must be at the very top. There. So this guide is designed for use with version 1.9 or above of the Edge OS, and we we're on 1.2. So there's a lot of things in here that it was starting to show me that just weren't in the menus. So hence, I want to start off with a properly provisioned router. So hence the need to upgrade all the way. Okay, looks like it's done. So we will 
try to reconnect. It must flip into HTTPS when you're inside doing certain things. So UBNT, UBNT. Now we should be up at 1.8.5, which we are. And we're getting more menus. Um, same display. So now I guess we can upgrade to 1.10. So same thing, system. And upload a file and pick the 1.10 now. And no little spinny wheel this time. So they've minimized that even from before. But we'll let it keep going. Yep, oh, there we go. Took a minute, but I guess we're good. One of the things that's actually been introduced since the, <laughs> the version that was installed on here is these wizards, and I'm hoping that will make it easier to just configure the router for what I want. We will find out. And that one was done. Doesn't actually take very long. Reboot again. And I'll be back when it's done. Okay, hopefully last time. UBNT, UBNT, and log in again. Now we should be at 1.10.7, excellent. So this is where we wanted to be. Um, right now I am connected on this port, Ethernet 0. So let's see what the wizards can give us. So, basic setup, WAN plus 2 LAN. So, internet connection type, Ethernet 0, DHCP, enable the default firewall, excellent, no static IPs, no PPIP, no uh, IPv6. So for that, bridging, enable bridging will have performance impact since it's basically doing the task of switching in software. So we'll use the actual switch instead, but we may not be able to use all the ports for the switch, but that might be okay. So secondary LAN port, 119.168.1.1. And this LAN port, yeah, that's not, uh, don't want to do that right now. Use a setup, username, UBNT, password, password, create a new admin user. So we'll call this one admin. And put in the password. And we'll keep the existing user. Yeah, there we are. And I think that's that step. So DCP firewall, blah blah blah. We'll apply that. So here's a few warning messages. I'm going to re reconfigure the router. And we need to connect the laptop to one of the LAN ports this time. And we should be able to connect the ETH0 to a WAN port. I will accept that and reboot again. Be back when it's rebooted. I'll also uh, move my PC to one of the LAN ports now, this time. Just going to switch my port to be DHCP. For when it comes up, I should get an IP address assigned to it. That's the theory. I've also plugged in my uh, WAN connection as well. So we'll see if it comes up. Okay, it seems to have remembered my DHCP configuration from way back when I configured it with version 1.2 software. 
because it's assigned my PC a 1.150 address. Um, now whether it's routing, I don't know. Let's find out, I guess. I should be able to get back to that if it's all good. If that's working, good. Try my new uh, username. And that works okay, which is good. So, <coughs> we now have a basic setup configured, which is good. And it looks like I do have, let's see if this still works. My reload. Do I have any internet access? No, I don't, not yet. Which means the router is not DHCP on what port? Oh, ETH0. I did connect that to ETH0. I don't know if my router is, my modem is still remembering that it's issued a address already. I know for the provider I have, it'll only give me one IP address. I might have to um, bounce it just to allow it to issue that address to a different MAC address. Let me just go investigate, but back, back in a moment. Okay, looks like that was my problem. I've got a now got a WAN IP address. I know they change over time, so you know, um, but it's a signed one. So technically now I should have internet access. So let's just go and refresh one of these pages. And there I go. So I got to figure out how to do the rest of the port, of course. But that looks like I'm working quite nicely there. Working? Yep. All right, let's try speed test. Just cause I can. Well, that seems to be working rather well. 58, 50, yeah, 58.9. Um, I should probably stick the other router on there to be fair because the time of day is now much later. So it may be working just fine on the other one too, but I want to make sure we're not worse off. So I will quickly click it in and uh, do a one on that. So you can see here's 60 down, four and a bit up. I've actually got a 10 up, so it's still a bit slow in the up. Let me just go configure the other one. And we'll do that for that, and we'll know. Okay, looks like it's connected. Um, see what IP address we had 150 before. Yeah, I've got 202, so it's giving me a new IP address. So let's run that uh, speed test again. So we had 60. And like five or six, so well, I expected it to be better, and it looks like it is. Upload is not really well, probably within the margins of errors. Let me just rerun that again right away because we're going way up to 60 on this as well, it's just tailed off a little bit afterwards. This time it seems to be staying there, so we're getting about the same. Um, the route is certainly not the limitation there. And as I said, I'm not replacing the router because of performance issues. I'm replacing it because of reliability issues. So that's good. That's all working fine. All right, going to put the other router back in. Okay, that all seems to be working fine. My performance is still up there where it was. Um, so according to this, we've got one local network and a local two network. Uh, local one is currently where my PC is plugged in. And the local two is the uh, 2.1 subnet. Now I might switch the DHCPs around because I've got a lot of things statically configured and I don't really, or sorry, no, they're on leases. So I guess I could 
um, change that, but they'd have to all be <laughs> rebooted and things, which would be a pain. Um, so anyway, I will probably put them all... Yeah, I think I will switch these around. Um, I've got to rethink how I'm going to connect things as well, because I had um, all the ports used up on my old one, which was a four port after the WAN as well. And But I had my PC, um, my gigabit switch, a second router, which was handling Wi-Fi at the other end of the house as well. Uh, and then I also had my phone adapter. So one of the the secondary router is going to get replaced with a Wi-Fi access point. Uh, I guess the phone system can pro I can put my PC probably th through the phone router or something like that um, for the direct connect. I'll also have a connection through my gigabit switch anyway uh, to it, which will probably be fine. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, but anyway, the next thing I guess is to um, fire up the Wi-Fi adapters and get them configured. A little bit different, but I needed this to be working first. So the last two PoE ports, which are showing up as disconnected here, I need to enable the PoE on them so that the Wi-Fi routers will show up so that I can configure them. And they will use for, uh, better check that. For, yep, they're rated for 24 volts. So we pick 24 volts. And we say, yes, this is on number three. And we'll save that. And it now shows us it's configured for that. So we want to make sure we don't plug anything else in there. And we do the second one and 24 volts as well. And we'll save that. Well, before we go off, we've got traffic analysis. Let's just see what we can see here. Not actually showing anything yet. Oh, that's because there's no users doing anything yet. I guess I don't count as a user. So routing, so it's showing my current routing tables. Uh, firewall, NAT, I don't have anything configured there yet. Uh, services, two DHCP servers, one on each of those outgoing ports. Uh, VPN, nothing configured there yet. Looks like it still only supports Raider server rather than just putting in a username and password. Um, you can do it, but you've got to do it at a command line level. Quality of service, so we can tweak that later. Uh, users, so right now we've just got the admin user set up. Uh, configuration tree. Uh, Got to get to know that. And then we've got the wizards. So we've done the wizard that we wanted. I guess we could do load balancing, which would be where you would use um, both Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 with a load balanced WAN connection for fault tolerance. You've got load balancing 2, which looks like site to site type of configurations. Yeah, that doesn't look like anything else. I'm not going to change anything there. Um, DNS host name. We're going to be configuring some uh, static IP addresses for the DCP server, but that's fine. Uh, VPN status, universal PNP, we're leaving those alone. Um, services. Yeah, I want to switch these two for their IP address ranges. So we will do that now. Okay, we have the two DHCP switched around. I just had to uh, reconnect properly and that's now working. I've got uh, Ethernet 1 as 192.168.2 and the rest are on dot one so my existing devices once I set up the static leases will be the same so I just going into the system settings basic settings for the router where I want to just tweak the name so I've set up my domain name 
um, my default name server for everything, my time zone, um, my system host name, I'm going to just call it uh, Hot and Home Router, and I think that's pretty much it. I think the gateway for default is going to be. I think if I leave it open, it just works, so I'll leave that alone. Uh, Telnet, I'm leaving off for now. SNMP, leaving off. System logs, um, I'm going to leave that alone for now. UBNT discovery, I'll leave turned on. SSH server is enabled on port 22. It uses the same username password as this web login. And looks like we're good to go for now. Uh, next thing then is going to be um, the two Wi-Fi adapters. One of them I've already plugged in, which is why ETH4 is showing up there. Um, just close this. That's me logged in. Not sure why that's still showing nothing, but it's probably because I'm just me logged in. And here is our dashboard. So we can see here we've got the WAN port, which says Internet. We've got our local port, which I'm connected to, which has been given me um, 2.1. Uh, sorry, this is the local port address. It's not the DHCP assigned address of me being connected. And this is the other one, which is 1.1, which is local 2, which is all three of these, I guess. But this is the switch. And then these three here are connected to the switch. Um, this one here is local to ETH2. I'm going to connect to my gigabit switch. And ETH3 is going to be connected to the other Wi-Fi access point. Um, should be able to look at, well, if you look at DHCP, we should be able to see who's been assigned what. I guess you've got to do them individually. Actions, a few leases. So you can see here that's the one of the Wi-Fi adapters that's been given a lease, and this one is me. Okay, so that's good. Those are the only two things that are connected right now.